Hello and Namaste. This is Neeraj here, and once again, welcome back to my channel, Neeraj Shah Stock Analysis. So, in today's video, I would like to discuss something regarding geopolitics. It is the largest, has the, as you know, it's a superpower and the largest uh, uh, defense budget of around 750, 760 billion dollars. Okay, it is much more than the next uh, 10 big countries' uh, defense budget. You know. Uh, if you add the 10 countries defense budget also, so USA's defense budget of 750, 760 billion dollar is much, much higher than this next 10 countries big defense budget. It's almost, uh, you know, uh, it's more than that. And the next second is the China. China has a defense budget of around 230 billion dollar. Okay. Per year. We are talking about this annual defense budget. Okay. And India last year, as of uh, you know whatever the data available was, it was around 72 billion dollar. But you have to understand that out of this, around 20, uh, 75 billion dollar. Sorry. So out of that, around 20 billion dollars, more than 20 billion dollars, uh, is goes toward the you know that uh, that uh, pay and salaries and allowances and grants. So it is a non-combat, uh, uh, you can say expenses. So. Pure defense uh, budget means uh, pure uh, expenses on the defense uh, uh, is say 54 billion dollar. And if you look at the new procurement means every year you know that each country buys something new. So for say so in case of India, if you look at the new procurement of the new military hardware like some new systems S400 or some anti missile or anti satellite. Uh, uh, destruction system or some uh, naval ships warship uh, you know like the nuclear submarines or the warship ca carriers so this uh, if you look at this new equipments i mean you know acqu acquisition of or the purchase of new equipments it all the three wings uh, it's uh, navy air force and uh, and uh, and army it's roughly around 20, 21 uh, billion dollar. So uh, out of that, uh, you know, 30 percent is is for the out of the budget of 54 billion dollar. 30 percent is roughly about the acquisition of the new systems or the new some uh, items. Uh, but 70 percent is the maintenance of uh, your existing uh, uh, equipments or the existing systems. You understand? So, and then the Russia is around 60 to 60, 65 billion dollar. Uh, but you have to understand the difference that Russia's defense budget of 65 billion dollar uh, and India's defense budget, suppose, because Russia is 100 percent, if not 100 percent, but mostly its all defense equipments are its indigenous uh, uh, domestic. Uh, its own production of uh, you know local and most of this is their all systems whether it is uh, that air fight uh, fighter planes or whether it is ship carriers or whether it is artillery systems or whether it is anti missile systems or anti satellite systems uh, or all different kinds of uh, hypersonic supersonic missiles and all these different whatever you know you can take up uh, all these equipments uh, uh, it's all 100% you can say that Russia uh, produces its own locally manufactured uh, defense equipments. So that way you can say that uh, because see suppose India buys around 60% of uh, the defense uh, equipments is, is Russian origin. So uh, you have to add minimum minimum of say 30 to 40% to the Russia's uh, uh, defense uh, budget because if it would have been purchasing from the other countries or from other supplier outside its own uh, supplies then it would add you know that cost would add definitely it will not be you know if I am producing and I am consuming so for my me captive consumption will be only the cost of that production and a nominal uh, margin of uh, you know that capital cost but uh, if I am producing and I am selling it to outside, then so definitely there will be a profit margin, right? So you have to, uh, in that way you add that 30 percent minimum to the 62 billion dollars. So Russia's budget will be something like uh, 82, 83 billion in effectively in terms of, you know, that uh, purchase power parity if we, if we normalize all the defense budgets, 
then it will be around 82 to 85 billion dollars. So it is still higher than even though this economy in, 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 in terms of the GDP, it is uh, smaller than India. But uh, and with this conflict in ongoing conflict, Russia has already, you know, kind of which I was reading in some of this uh, local uh, newspapers in Russia here was that uh, that for the next two years, I mean, from 22 to uh, 25, they have increased that uh, new budget, uh, defense budget to 600 billion dollars. You know, so almost, you know, they have increased it to say five times uh, from what is the currently the defense budget, five to six times. So it's a huge, massive uh, uh, going to be the increase in this defense budget in the view of all this conflict, particularly with the Ukraine and the NATO ongoing conflict. So, and when I'm trying to tell is that uh, why, so, so you please try to understand that any defense equipments, you know, if you have a legacy of the systems, so overnight you are not going to change it. In, it is not, overnight it's not going to be replaced also. And it's not possible to be replaced such a huge of say 40, 50 years of uh, we have continuously bought Russian defense systems. Our most of the 60% of the defense systems are still, uh, it's Russia base is the, you know, the technology or the platform or base is Russian based systems. So you imagine that in, in say on an average, even if it is uh, say for next uh, uh, suppose in next 50 years, in last 50 years, we have, we may have not bought less than uh, 50 into 50, two and a half trillion dollars worth of equipments from Russia. So now if you want to replace those, suppose, so how much it will take time? It will not happen overnight or it will not happen even in next few years. It will take next 10 to 15 years minimum and that too at what cost? So now what we are getting at say 54 and 70 billion dollars uh, of the budget, what we are able to, you know, still made up of uh, quite a big army, you know, the third largest army and very strong professional and quite strong militarily also we have become. And because of that Russia's equipments and Russia's are sturdy and much more cheaper. So if you the same thing, if you want to go and say, suppose USA will be very happy. That is what USA is trying to do that, that, uh, you know, India falters in its support to Russia and Russia collapses. And what has happens is that India will also collapse. Why I'm trying to tell is that because we have a very big ongoing kind of a conflict with the China also. So now look at China's defense budget. It is around 225, 230 billion dollars. It is almost like three times, uh, three and a half times bigger than India's. So in an, if any, any such kind of a, you need to be always alert about your, uh, about, not alert, you need to be prepared that overnight if something conflict happens, war happens or something, you should be able to respond it and sustain it. Now, Russia has the ongoing conflict this is going on in the nine months. Since nine months it is continuing and still, you know, it's continuing and it's despite of the all the naysayers uh, about uh, Russia's capability to sustain the fight, it's still, it's nine months, it's still ongoing and ammunition has not uh, you know, uh, it is not exhausted and they have a, you know, continue to supply, which is to the surprise of the mostly this US and NATO, that how they are able to sustain this nine months of this war and this ammunition and still fight is going on. But look at in India scenario, uh, in if India, we will not be able to sustain more than two months of a war. That is, I'm in, in extreme position I'm talking about. And if we have to fight this kind of a two front war, suppose China and Pakistan. So imagine the kind of equipments and imagine the kind of uh, 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 money you have to spend. And that too, in, in most of the cases, it will not be able to more than 45 to 60 days, India. You look at the what kind of a budget you will need. You will look at what kind of a fuel you will need for sustaining this, you know, when the air freight and all these things, diesel you will need. You will look at the logistics cost. So, which 
India keeps on getting from this Russia at the same kind of system as I told you, it will be more than two to three times costly, if if at all available uh, from say USA and other uh, this uh, European countries. So that is what the economics is, and also it will not be very simple to acquire because from where you will get this much of money how much money it will be required more than two to three times so and you know china is already there and in in, in case of china you know geo geopolitics is such that even though say suppose russia may not interfere but russia had still supplied the ammunition during this galvan crisis and uh, so uh, and, and 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 mind well i can be very assured that China, in case of this conflict with China, this USA can only talk about this, all this support and all these things. It's not going to intervene. Nobody is going to intervene. You are on your own in this world. That is what it shows, like in case of Russia, that Russia is alone actually fighting. Uh, there is nobody uh, supporting uh, uh, indirectly to Russia. And that is the reason why I am pitching with this uh, particular uh, argument is that if if Russia doesn't survive or let's say hypothetical question that Russia, Russia uh, be on the losing side in this particular country. Suppose it's a hypothetical, we are not, uh, it's, it's not, to, then what can happen? The happen is that how we are going to suddenly, if Russia's industrial complex collapses, this military infrastructure, factories, equipment, manufacturing, all this thing because of this particular war. What India is going to do? As I told you, in last 50 years, we have more than 60% of our equipments are the Russian origin. Look at two and a half trillion dollars worth of equipments, which we may have accumulated, purchased, upgraded, whatever. So even with your make in India and all these things, it's, it's a good start that they have started. But it is not going to happen overnight, right? If tomorrow or in next three years also, if we need to replace, how we are going to replace all these systems, two and a half trillion worth of dollar worth of systems, it's not going to happen. It's not possible. It's not possible for any manufacturer. And even if it is suppose you are ready to, somebody is ready to supply, how much money it will, as I told you, Russia was the, was the cheaper, sturdier and better technology. So you can immediately say that your 70 billion dollar, suppose 21 billion dollar worth of uh, your procurement was able to pro uh, procure say 100 uh, artillery systems, suppose, hypothetical. But with the same 21 billion dollar, if sub Russia collapses and if Russia is not able to supply, you go to the other countries, Western countries, particularly US and all these things, with that 21 you will hardly be getting not more than 50 of artillery systems instead of 100, half and at a higher price. So imagine that a full system over this 60, 50, 60 years, whatever we have procured from Russia, if we have to replace it overnight, it is impossible. And how much money, whether India can afford, India has that much of money to replace this so, if overnight, if this thing happens, Russia's industrial collapse and all this thing, which Russia, which USA wants, very. So, it serves two purposes. It is not against China. First of all, you know, you have to understand that this uh, this USA is, is, is never against. It is all, uh, now only they have started, you know, talking about the sanctions on China and put up some, uh, some uh, sanctions on the technology sector. But this is still, I will tell you that uh, uh, USA is not interested in in totally destroying China because China serves as the factory of the world and the cheap labor. But USA is very much interested in destroying Russia because it serves two purposes. It's, it's, it holds the rise of India also. As I told you this, you know, our defense becomes vulnerable. Our, we will be without supply 
of our 60 percent of the equipment and also in that case you know we already have the ongoing conflict with the say usa and pakistan pakistan is always the terrorist we will be in a really really screwed position to be very frankly in in the crude world to say so this is the economics of that all this growth of this years and that is what that us is hell bent on doing this that india you know uh, should not uh, so it is more in interest of india to support russia in this particular ongoing conflict and and make sure that russia comes out winner or the comes out with the flying colors and russia doesn't collapse because otherwise it will be the collapse of india whatever said and done if your defenses are not done your progress is doesn't matter as you can see in terms of japan what is japan or korea whatever the progress or this thing is there they can't defend their own they don't have their own army look at the this european nations what they are dependent on now average gdp grew by seven and a half percent so from minus five to plus five for russia and for india also 4.5 percent to seven and a half percent gdp average i'm talking out for the 10 year average and from the 2010 to 2015 if you look at russia's so it was plus two and a half percent and after that the sanctions started because of that 2014 russia took over crimea and after that the sanctions came and you know it's uh, its growth again faltered and became negative in 2016 and 17 and again of which we get from russia russia is ready to give technologies russia has given technology for brahmos missile so all these things will collapse in overnight it is a massive setback for india so this is the time that india has to stop this hesitation for its own interest because self interest national interest is the biggest interest if i survive then only i can look after other if i don't survive how i can help others that is the reason statistically today what i am i am talking about is that it is in india's interest that russia comes out the winner because usa never wants that india should be able to you know that with the recent actions of usa also you can see that the china will all uh, sorry pakistan will always be trying to play mischief and we will always our energy will be diverted towards that china is always there that unresolved border territory with that combined thing how you are going to survive they can talk about it but as i told you that overnight if your bullets if ammunition is not coming how you are going to procure those at double triple price how it makes sense how you are going to replace all this equipments by the other and that too at the two three four times higher price because when you have a assured supplier and that supply is gone so whoever is that is a monopolistic situation he will cut his own price whatever it is you know like it happens in case of oil it happens in case of everything that is the reason that it is in india's sovereign interest that russia remains the power global power as of as it is now that is what i just wanted to share my little understanding about the future and little uh, some other interesting topic and interesting idea till that time ciao from nirash from moscow and love you all see you next week